Right now, this comparison between the $50 Blue Snowball Ice, $100 Blue Yeti, and $300 Rode NT1 kit has already started, and you're hearing audio from one of these mics. You just don't know which one it is, just that it's option A. I'm starting the video this way with a blind audio comparison to try to get you to put aside subconscious biases you might have just knowing the NT1 kit is three times the price of the Yeti, which is two times the price of the Snowball. As we switch from option A to option B, let me formally introduce you to the video. What's going on people, my name is Jason and I make quality videos that cover both general tech like phone reviews and audio tech like my comparisons. Feel free to drop a subscribe down below to support what I'm doing on YouTube. But back to the three mics we're talking about today, I will say the main focus is the Snowball versus the Yeti, as these are closer in price and they're both USB mics, but I wanted to throw the road into this comparison so you can feel out what a step up in price and thus audio quality will get you. As we switch from option B to C, I'll just let you know I put links in the description below to the cheapest prices I could find for all these mics on Amazon and eBay. This supports the channel at no extra cost to you and saves you time from having to hunt around for the best deal. Alright, feel free to scrub backwards in the video to reevaluate these options using those timestamps, but I'm going to go ahead and reveal that option A was the $100 Blue Yeti, option B was the $50 Blue Snowball Ice, and last but not least, option C was the $300 Rode NT1 kit. Let's get into things. Let's start with unedited audio from the Blue Snowball Ice. I bought this exact mic in 2017 to upgrade my video's audio quality, and I feel like it was the perfect fit for that point in my journey. I was upgrading from a super cheap handheld audio recorder. I feel like most people these days are upgrading from their phone's mic, but either way, the Snowball offers a massive increase in audio quality. My video's voiceovers were clear and fuller with much less background noise. As the years passed, the Snowball definitely upheld its reputation as an excellent starter mic, but I also had the opportunity to use other mics and learn more about audio in general. So as I round out this section of the video, I'll say the main downside here is a slightly metallic or boxy sound signature that sometimes makes you sound nasally. The noise floor is also worse than some more expensive USB mics. Next, let's listen to unedited audio from the Blue Yeti. I bought this mic in 2020 to upgrade from the Snowball, and one of the most popular videos on my channel is my Yeti review, where I talked about that upgrade. In the review, I said the Yeti doesn't offer twice as good audio quality for the price, which is still true, but that it's an excellent upgrade despite that. Both those points are absolutely still true to this day, as I find the Yeti audio quality is fuller and less nasally compared to the Snowball. The only caveat to all that is my particular Yeti model breaking after about half a year. I had issues with the screws on the sides getting loose, and the pretty heavy metal head of the mic would flop back and forth, putting stress on the cable, and ultimately not only bending that cable, but breaking the port on the mic, rendering it useless. I'm not going to dwell on that too much here, as I've definitely covered it a fair share on the channel, but to summarize things, A, the Yeti is still absolutely an option worth looking into, as it does have great audio quality for the price, and B, be careful with stress on the cable if you end up going with this mic. Other downsides I've noticed with this mic over the years include low end that can sometimes be too boomy, and audio that degrades more in editing than XLR mics. Next up, there's unedited audio from the Rode NT1 mic, plus AI1 interface kit. I bought this kit in 2021 as a solid upgrade to both my YouTube videos and the music stuff I was working on at the time. I bought mixing headphones to go with that kit, the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros, and just listening to the audio from this mic through those headphones, I was able to hear clarity in the audio I hadn't heard before with the USB mics. That, plus the almost non-existent noise floor made mixing and editing with this mic an absolute breeze with very little degradation. All that I got for $300 for both the mic and the interface, the interface being what converts the analog audio into digital that the computer can process. USB mics do that conversion with what you can think of as a built-in interface, but they do it worse than XLR mics working with a separate interface. I'm not as acquainted with the downsides of the NT1 as it's what I use right now and the best mic I've ever owned, but I have heard some people say that it's got a bright sound signature that sometimes leads to the high end being too harsh. Before we move on to the following sections of this video, let's listen to the noise floors of each of these mics. Okay, we're now moving on to the edited section of this video where I pop my editing chain onto the audio of each of these mics, starting with the Rode NT1. 
I'm actually using the exact plugins from my most recent Audacity editing tutorial, so feel free to hop onto that video after this one if you want to learn how to edit like me using 100% free plugins in free software. Switching to edited Snowball Audio, I'll say don't feel like you have to break the bank to get good audio quality. I've used each of these mics for a significant period of time on my channel, and each was fitting to the production quality of that point in time. Make a smart decision for your budget, but then spend the majority of your time making the most of what you actually end up getting. As we switch to edited Yeti audio, I'll say there's a chance you just don't like how I edit my audio. That's cool though, as the purpose of this section is to demonstrate the flexibility of each of these mics when it comes to tweaking their sound signature. There's a lot of value in seeing how mics hold up to basic audio editing. And I will say, my particular audio editing settings are pretty inoffensive and follow good procedures for a podcast or voiceover. With that being said, that about wraps up this comparison between the $50 Blue Snowball Ice, the $100 Blue Yeti, and the $300 Rode NT1 kit. The subscribe button is down below, the links to each of these mics are below that, and even further down is the comments section, you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next video.